Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right. Welcome to Super Fun Sunday. What have we got here? <gasps> Steampunk. Drama Obscura. This is the trade, um, the trade paperback of it. This is the second one. I couldn't find the first one and I don't have time to look for it today. I have good stories for both. Uh, projects, um, but yeah, this collects issues six through twelve, and some of them were oversized. Um, really, really beautiful wraparound cover. It's a shame we can't see it better. It's a little dark, um, but this is like a wraparound. It's hard to tell, but you've got Cole with his armor here. Oh wait, you know what? No way! No way! <laughs> we can see it better here though now, right? Oh yeah, this is the original. Boom shakalaka boom. You can see the size difference. A boom shakalaka boom. So what is it? It's super fun Sunday. What is it gonna be? It's gonna be super fun. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna look at some steampunk art. Um, so this is Cole Blacksmith. This is him in his like um, previous life when he was a normal man. And then this is what the evil Dr. Absinthe did to him. They ruined him. And this is Fiona, his love. But you see her hand's a skull because I think she's dead. So she's reaching out from beyond the grave. That's uh, Chris and mine's uh, signature combined. Chris, friend, and then Bacalo all smashed together to one little delicious <laughs> crescendo. <laughs> um, some of you, if you follow my channel, I've shown this piece before, but anyway, it's like the cover is very, very dark. Um, so it, it, it is definitely easier to see it in black and white. Look right back there. Do you see Faust? He's hiding. That's the top of his head. That little thing right there is his flute. If you go down, you can see his nose. He's like looking down. That's his nose right there. Those are his like cheeks. Those are his eye sockets. And then that's like kind of part of his neck. The flute's right there. Um, look, there's the evil Dr. Absinthe. So first things first, nobody draws like Chris. No one. He's a man unto himself. His stuff is super creative. It's very stylish. Um, and he's he's reeled it in at times, you know? I mean, there's definitely, um, I think, eras of his work, you know, working for Marvel, where he's done stuff that's uh, a little more traditional, but he, he never can seem to take the um, creativity out of his stuff. Not that he would want to, but you know what I'm saying? is like, he never really goes completely, like, traditional. There's always something... Um, kind of avant-garde about his stuff, which is great. I mean, that's why I think we love it. Is is uh, his layouts are wild, and there's just there's a real cool factor to it. So, um, and then fish, dead fish everywhere. Okay, so let's start to kind of go through the book, see what we got. All right. So hopefully everyone's having a good week. I did get work. I was actually getting a lot. Like a lot of people were concerned for me. I was worried. Don't get me wrong, uh, but I. I felt somewhat confident that I would I would end up getting um, something going, so I'm okay. Richie's okay. I'm working on Iron Maiden uh, cover right now, variant cover for um, their comic, and um, that's what I'm spending the lion's share of my day on today, is that. All right, so this is the cover for six in grayscale. Um, in the comic, what you'll see is um, grayscale pages, and those are um, flashbacks. So, but this is just a style choice with this. So, um, I, again, look at how, God, this stuff is just so great. This is going to be really fun looking at this, because one, um, for me, uh, I definitely have seen the black and white art way more than the color. Um, and two, I haven't looked through these books in a long time, so, yeah, it's such a great page. Um, so... This was a cliffhanger book, and what that means is that Image Comics, specifically through Wildstorm, um, three of the top talents started a little group. And I think Bacala was was originally um, thought for for the group, um, but but maybe he was tied down with something else at the time. But but anyway, so Joe Matarera did Battle Chasers, J. Scott Campbell did Danger Girl, and Umberto Ramos did Crimson. And about a year into it, Chris came over and did his own book, which was Steampunk. So, um, I had just come off inking Travis, and, you know, I, my guess is that Wildstorm suggested me. I, I, 
Chris was one of those artists that I always admired from afar, but I didn't know him. Um, he had always worked at like different companies than really I had ever been a part of. So, God, look, look at these pages. They're so kick ass. Um, but he had worked for Vertigo, and then he had worked for Marvel. And I, I kind of always would, would uh, say, like, it was almost like we were in two different um, universes. And, and uh, even though we were circling around, like, the odds of us, like, syncing up on something were, were just probably never going to happen. But anyway, so um, I want to say, all right, I did. I did one sample piece, um, which I'll show when I do the the first trade paperback. I can show um, that. I still have the original of it. Um and uh, I, I got the job, so it was really, really cool. Um, and, you know, it's always fun to look at this stuff because it's just so, it's so out there. Um, you know, a lot of people really, really love this series if, they, if they're aware of it. Um, it's one of their favorite things that Chris has ever done. Um, you know, we've talked for years about coming back to it and kind of finishing the story. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, oh, I mean, I, I can't control any of that. So it, it's just, I keep doing my work and, um, work on the different things that I do and, and they're, you know, Chris will work on, um, the books that he does, but yeah, they've never, they've never really gone back to it. So who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, man, this is really cool. Look at this. I'm actually digging it. Um, you know, really crazy layouts. Look at that. Funny story about this is I actually remember um, Chris saying that that um, this piece was actually really, really hard for him to lay out. Uh, he spent a lot of time working on it and had, um, you know, ultimately the drawing was actually quite fast to do, but but figuring it out was, was much harder. Man, that is so cool. A perfect amount of time has gone by where I can actually enjoy this stuff um, without... Um, you know, getting real critical of like, oh, uh, you know, my goal with the inks when I ink this stuff was always this sort of like bridge his Vertigo stuff with the, the cleaner style. I actually was a big fan of what he did at Vertigo that was a little more um, organic. And um, <laughs> Chris, Chris kind of, I think, likes like the more clean um, inks. And uh, I mean, I could do that. But when I see his pencils, I see this potential to really pull it a different way and it's it is it's real difficult because i want to follow what he puts down and then embellish from there as opposed to um like refine everything um so uh yeah it's it's interesting but it was it was funny when i would work on this stuff and people would come to the studio like um because i was inking it while i was at wildstorm um you know, people were always curious and wanted to see the pages. And uh, they'd be like, how can you tell what's going on? <laughs> I was like, you kind of get used to it in a, in a funny way. It's like there's little cues um, where, like, like I could spot a face um, based on, like, a couple of little landmarks. Or, like, this Faust character was always sort of um, tricky to read. This is funny. He, Absinthe is, like, hitting golf balls off the... Sorry for the glare of pa shiny paper. Um... But, uh, yeah, there were little cues that you would see, little little pieces of costume. And in a real um, kind of dense panel, I would always spot something and go, oh, you know what, that's the hair or the arm of that guy. And then you'd start to track it around to, um, you know, whatever it was. Oh, yeah, God, this is so cool. Wow. This stuff is looking really, really cool to me today. Like, that's a big face right here in the foreground. It's a little difficult to read, but... I don't know why it made me think of this, but this this little piece of gear right here, I remember right when I had first started um, inking Chris, I had walked into editorial one day and there was like a submission package from some some inker that was sitting on one of the desks and um, had like a steampunk page or something like that they had done a test page over. But I flipped through the the, the the package and it was all stuff that I had inked like published. And I was like, this guy's going for my jobs. It was really really funny. Um, to see that, you know, where it was like all the work was stuff that I had done, you know, for, for print and it's like, oh man, got to stay sharp. People are circling behind me trying to grab my stuff. But, you know, I was telling a friend of mine that, that working in comics is like this weird cross between like being a band on tour where you're always working, um, and having to move on to the next like gig, a page book 
job, whatever it is, you know, like you're on one tour and then you go on another tour and then it's kind of like being a professional athlete, um, with the sort of like, there's only so many slots on the team and you want to be a starter and, um, you know, there's always people coming in behind you that, that you know, ultimately do want to kind of sort of lock down a job that maybe you will work on. So I was seeing here, like we're fading into a flashback. So this is when Fiona was alive. I was telling a friend of mine, I have like two bands that I'm like, I listen to on YouTube that <laughs> like the guilty pleasure bands. One's uh, Avenged Sevenfold and the other one's Papa Roach. <laughs> I, I said I was becoming a 21 year old stripper. Oh gosh. I remember when I first started inking this stuff, how fun it was. And when Chris would send him pencil pages, just being like, oh man, like this stuff is so cool. Like, like just even the hairdos on these kids and the costumes. It's like the, the ideas just pour out of this dude. That's rabid Randy. <laughs> He's like dangling that thing in there for the fish. It's so cute. So cute. <laughs> My silhouette. Joe Matarera is the master of like silhouette panels, I think. And Battle Chasers, he used them so well. If you ever check out Battle Chasers number one, I actually did some backgrounds on that book. I, I helped assist uh, Tom McWeeny on some pages. Deadlines were always an issue, man. I'm telling you, like, like there's always something due. Oh, that's a nice page. Look at the layout. That's just so cool. Oh, that pose is awesome. Shift. Let's like a little, I'm gonna switch hands with the phone. We went through, I want to say maybe three different sets of colorists throughout the the book, the run. We we worked together for about two years on this. Um, I'm proud to say, if you grab Steampunk, you will only find my inks. No fill-in pages. Zero point zero. If you're a fan of Bacalo, you know that that's not always the case when you pick up a comic. But yeah, it's 100% Chris and I. There actually is one page, though, that was the ink by Art T. Bear in the um, first um, trade. It was an ad that they had done for the book before I was brought on, um, and they used it as like a little cre credits page, but um, that wasn't really part of the book, and it was not part of the run when we were on it. It was just one of those things where um, I, I think Art and Chris had been working together at Marvel, and Chris had done the piece, and he did it. It's just a cat, like on a lamp with like some sparks, but it's, that was the only thing. I should go back and ink that piece now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is a weird page. It looked great in black and white. Um, like such a cr creepy like layout with these little bot bugs. And I always put little glows around them. Um, it's a little hard to see, but like the little, little, little bit of splatter, a little bit of like kind of white circles and stuff. But yeah, so so it was interesting having the different colorists come onto the book because the first colorist uses a lot of textures. And, and it, it did actually kind of overwhelm the art. Um, it was kind of before people were really, um, uh, the colors were real good, but the, they would, the textures that they would use, they wouldn't warp them to fit the form. And so you would have stuff flatten out because there would be like a brick texture or cobblestone, whatnot. And um, it wasn't in perspective or, or, you know, it didn't, it didn't, um... oh my God, my cat, oh, it's got one of its toys. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a little, it was a little frustrating because the colors look beautiful, but the textures were killing me. It just made the inks look like they were wrong. Not, not wrong, but, um, yeah, it's like, it's, you've got, sorry, my cat is crying out in the hallway. Let me just pause this for a second. Okay. I'm back. She talks to her toy and, um, she, I, the, our one cat really talks a lot, and, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, so if, when, when, like, even this is a good note for, for people that color their own stuff is you really want to be mindful if you use textures and stuff like that, that you're not flattening stuff out because it's, it, it's real easy to throw down a texture and, 
um, you know, if something is wrapping around like a cylinder or whatnot, there's there's foreshortening and stuff that goes on and even vanishing points for that texture. You can't have it all equally spaced like it's going to go on a straight on shot and then have it on the edge of something. It just doesn't work that way. Um, and so that was a real shortcoming. Um, and I had just come off of inking Travis, who was very, very uh, form oriented. And that was kind of the, the only conversation we really ever had about my inks was... Um, to think about it in terms of three-dimensional space and to have stuff be what it was like a fold in a jacket was a fold in a jacket it wasn't just these feathered lines that sat on some sort of arbitrary black shape um and once that started clicking for me um you know then you start to see it in everything that, that there's a three-dimensionality to two things so it's just one of those things even with fire and stuff like that you know like the people that really wield those little subtle things the best, their work will look better. And you really, a lot of times, if you can't see it, you wouldn't really understand why it looks better. Man, that's a great page. God, now, now I'm like going... This is, this is making me want comic books like this. <laughs> that's the nice thing about doing your own book with Blaster Kid is I can totally like do stuff like this. So, um, yeah. There's no limits. No limits. I love his little... I love everything. But watch this. This is so kick-ass, though. Ready? You guys ready? Look what he does. It's like a little thing. So they're walking on the bridge up here. They go down here. They walk through this little tunnel. Look, there's a little ladder right there. Do you see the little ladder at the top of the thing? They go in here. They slide down here? This is a page. He thinks he's Sergio Aragonis. It totally reminds me of that, like the gutters of Mad Magazine, if you've ever seen those, where he would draw the little um, stories in the panels. But look at that. And then you end up seeing the characters at the bottom of this page. Who does this? No one freaking does this in comics. Only Mr. Chris Bacalo, the man. He does this in a few, like, there's all sorts of creative ways that he does stuff like that. Look at this little dude. He's in a fancy little chair. Looks like the front of a like old 1920s um, fancy car. But we were getting real good colors at this point. Good stuff. But you can see, like, the, the, the temptation to put texture on the armor and stuff like that um, can be problematic. Oh, man, that stuff is so cool. Man, I haven't seen this in just, like, long enough. It's looking good. Looking damn good. To be careful, YouTube has been doing some funky stuff lately with my videos. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but, like, yesterday stuff was missing from my channel. So I'm I'm, I'm addressing that. But just be patient if you can't find videos. Because, uh, yeah, there's something weird going on. It could be, it could be the channel itself, but... Like, uh, the um, the best advice I can give any artist was completely missing yesterday. I don't know what was going on. Then it reappeared for me, but I had someone, like, an hour later say that they still couldn't find it. So, I mean, you can search my channel and it would come up, but I don't know. Don't sweat it, though. I haven't pulled down anything. It's just, like, there's just something going on. Yeah, this is a great page, too. We caught a little bit of heat early on for the lettering in the book, that there was, like, too many fonts, and, and it was a little um, hard to read at times. I don't know, um, what is that, you know, I'm not a letterist, um, if, if that was ever addressed as they moved along. But, uh, yeah, I remember it was kind of weird. Like, I hadn't really heard criticism of lettering before, but when Absinthe would talk, he would go through all these different fonts. Um, Absinthe is the kind of main bad guy. Um, so... Oh, yeah, it's a great page, too. Little R2-D2 guy. And what I can do is um, next time when I do the, the next video, I'll actually break out a little bit of more original art so we can kind of... Or we could just do a compare contrast video. Why not? I, I have this original still. Um, beautiful, beautiful page. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's not a problem. That would actually be kind of fun. It's like from black and white to color, and I can tell little stories about working on the art. That would be cool. I'm actually working on intro music for my channel for like a little little short sort of 
intro video um, things. So it'll take a little while because I have to edit the, the video and then also do the music. Should be fun. Oh, yeah, this is a cool page. Let's get jump in. His, like, scarf sort of, like, leads your eye through the page. And then what do we say? Always up and out. That's where he's sending you. Look at the little shape right there. He's pointing you. He's saying, dude, this is where we're heading. The sweep. Let's wait 20 minutes. We'll go 10 more minutes. Oh, Chris, this is so good. Sometimes Chris watches these videos. If you watch this, Chris, we all love you. We love your work, and this is a celebration of your genius. So you can give Chris a shout out in the comments below. Tell him, tell him that uh, your thoughts on his work would be cool. It's always fun to read little stories from from people that have been touched by your work. God, that's a great page. Man, this is bringing back memories. Dude, I'm getting the feels. I remember this. Travis liked this cover. This He thought this was our best cover, he told me. It's high praise. <laughs> oh, Faust. There's his eye. Can you see this? There's his nose. It's up to no good. Oh man, God, I miss comic books like this. I'm telling you, dude. I'm so lucky that that I can draw and write because it's like I can be inspired by stuff like this and then really celebrate it in something that I'm working on. It's not that easy. I mean, to to do it. Um, all the time though, you know, um, that's the thing is, you know, I, like as an inker, I work with a lot of different pencilers. Most, most pencilers wouldn't draw stuff like this. Uh, Scotty Young really liked this page. I remember he came up to me at Comic Con and we were talking about Chris one time and, uh, he's a pretty big fan of his stuff and, uh, he really liked these down shots, um, in this sequence with the like, where you're like, you're actually seeing kind of like the whole house through one shot again it's just brilliant brilliant stuff there's like different rooms and he's showing you the different rooms without google sketchup kids <laughs> sorry you use your google sketchup but you won't have the character of this I'm telling you i know um cheeks sean galloway has been showing like his process for his book that he does um and he uses 3d models to uh keep his um environments consistent and it looks it looks really good um my my concern isn't really so much him using it it's that it falls into the hands of other people that that don't wield it um is is uh judiciously as him sean can draw really really good what worries me is someone that doesn't draw very good that starts using all those cheats and then or not cheats whatever you call it tools um and and uh never learns to draw, you're going to be helpless. I'm telling you, the second you can't use that, your drawings are going to fall to shit. You don't want that. That's no bueno. <laughs> You'd be better off just studying that stuff and then trying to draw it on your own, muscle through it. Because the amount of time that it would take to muscle through it is going to liberate you in the long run. Um, I had this page for a while. I thought it was actually better than the cover. Like, like this is a very similar shot to the cover. Um, it's got a panel here, though. Um, but I actually preferred this to the cover. I thought um, this is Queen Victoria, if I'm not mistaken. Um, she looked cooler here, I thought. Uh, this is a real nice page, too. Man, so many good pages. Whew. I was smart and kept a decent amount of this stuff. I, I would sell the pages that I wasn't really like that keen on, um, usually for more personal personal reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, I kept all my money shot pages. I was real smart with that. So and people always ask, like when I start talking about original art, um, if you ink over the pencils, generally the split in comics is two thirds, one third. So 
um, 21 page book, the pencil would keep 14 pages and I would keep seven. And uh, there's a million different ways to split up art. Chris and I would just get on the phone every issue or two and pick back and forth, you know, and we would generally share who goes first. So I would always, as a gentleman that I am, I would let, I would let Chris pick first. And I would say, if there's anything you really want, make sure you get it. And uh, then I would pick. And he was always very generous with me in terms of like uh, things too. And it's interesting too is when you you know when you do split up art, man, the rabbit Randy is so awesome. Um, when you do split up art with someone, um, it's it's fascinating what pages the penciler will sometimes gravitate towards um, because it's not always like quote unquote money shots. Oh, this is an insane double page spread. This is gonna be super hard to take in because of the glare and stuff, but. It's so many panels. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, this is all one piece. Isn't that wild? Um, but, uh, you know, like I had mentioned with David Finch, there was a page with, like, a mouse, and then it gets caught in a trap on a page with, like, Luther's feet. And he picked that pretty early when we were splitting up art. And it's like, you know, you kind of go, well, you, you don't want the Batman page with him looking all cool, like, doing something? It's like, nope, I want the shoes and the rat page. And you're like, okay. Batman. <laughs> but again, even with David, I let him, or not let him, but um, I would always be like, you know, he kept all the number one covers that we did. So Wonder Woman, Forever Evil, Dark Knight, I'd always let him keep the first one. Because, um, you know, those guys, are the they, they really are earning the jobs. Um, and as an inker, even though you're part of the team, um, without your penciler, you are nothing... Well, you're not nothing, but you know what I mean. Like, like, these are real nice shots. Boy, this is good. I'm so happy we're looking at this. Oh, this is just a zoom in. Um, they must have had like a blank page they needed to fill for um, having the book um, fall with the double page spreads and stuff. Here, so here's the actual printed page. Wow. I kind of remember. I remember these headshots, but I like this is a little like I don't totally remember that. Oh my god, this stuff is so cool. Wow. I'm start, I'm, it's interesting because I'm really seeing it almost more from a fan's eyes. Oh yeah, yeah, this page. God, I've seen this page so many times. <laughs> I think I, I might own the original for this. Or the black and white copy, like when I search hard drives, always comes up. Something like that. But I've seen this page like a bazillion times. Oh, <laughs> getting the suntan outside and the martini. It's so funny. Um, he, oh, and this is a dude with a little R2-D2 robot. That's like a cow back there with a fancy dot on its forehead. See, but panels like this, I mean, you could see how they're they're a little hard to read. But again, you kind of key in on, like, little little elements of... Uh, we won't spend too much time on this because it's a... Uh, oh, this double page spread. Oh, man. Come on, Chris. Let's do this. Let's finish this series. 12 more books. 12 more books. Mambudu X. This guy's cool. Look at his jacket. Isn't that nice? And he's got the trash. <laughs> the train. In this cool town. And look, there's a train. It's going into the sequence. Because Chris draws really good. This is the things that you won't be able to do with those 3D programs. So you're going to have all these very stiff shots. But if you ever came up with an idea like this, you wouldn't be able to pull it off because you wouldn't know how to draw it. Don't be that. Don't be that artist. It's word to the wise, children. There's the train. He's coming through the shot. This is like beyond Thunderdome. Purples on that look great, and those little like lit up lanterns, man, that's kick ass. Oh man, we're at twenty nine minutes. Shoot. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up. This was really good. God, I could do this for hours. That was the fastest thirty minutes of my life. Okay, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed Super Fun Sunday. And um, yeah, please share the video if you can. Smash like. Come over and check out my Patreon. For one dollar, you're gonna get 25 unlisted videos with even more. There's really like 35 now. Um, I'll send you 25, but if you look on the main page, you'll find more. Um, and I'm uploading art all day.
usually three or four posts, daily draw alongs for everyone to participate in. It's fun. All right, I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day, and we will definitely continue this. This might be a four-parter. So, um, yeah. Okay, bye.